Hello everyone, it's me Uncle John. Today I am going to read S6 6053 Dinosaur Detectives. Chapter 6 My scream echoed off the walls of the cave. Sounded like a horror movie. And the dinosaur that came from the back of the cave was a nightmare come true. It was over 15 feet tall and 30 feet long. It moved toward me on two powerful legs. Its arms were short, but there were sharp claws at the end of its three-fingered hands, but its mouth was what really caught my eye. Its big jaws were filled with long, jagged tooth, and it seemed to smile when it saw me. Run, Ralphie, I heard a freeze yell. That's an Allosaurus, it's a carnivore. In case you don't remember, a carnivore is a meat eater, I remembered, I, and I ran. Allosaurus made a swipe at me with its claws, but I ducked just in time. I saw Miss Frizzle and the rest of the class running to hide under the roots of a giant tree. Not far away, I sped through the underbrush to join them. That was close, Ralphie, the freeze said, as I slid to safety under the tree. Too close, I added. I hope that Allosaurus has a low EQ. Bad news, the freeze said. Allosaurus is on the smart side for a dinosaur. The Allosaurus came crashing through the trees. Closer to where we were hiding, Miss Freeze, Frizzle, can we go home now? I'm sorry, DA. My laptop is back on the bus, and anyway, we can't leave without Phoebe. Then a prehistoric mammal that looked a lot like a mouse crawled over Wanda's food. She let out another blood-curdling scream. I saw the head of the Allosaurus stop in mid-air. It seemed to take a few moments to think about the scream, then it headed in our direction. Sorry, Wanda whispered. I looked at Miss Frizzle. Her red hair seemed to be sticking straight out of her head. She held up a finger for us to be quiet. The Allosaurus stomped closer and stopped. We heard the sound of more big feet thundering through the forest. The Allosaurus had heard them too. It reared up higher on its back legs and opened its mouth. In a few minutes, two Stegosaurus came into view. They crashed through the trees, swinging their heavy bodies from side to side. The Allosaurus had forgotten all about little old us. Its brain was busy figuring out how to get a Stegosaurus steak for dinner. The carnivore waited until the two Stegosaurus were walking close by. Then it attacked. The Allosaurus slashed down at the smaller Stegosaurus with its sharp claws. It made a deep wound in the side of the young dinosaur, but the fight wasn't over. The older Stegosaurus came around to the side of the Allosaurus, turning its back to the enemy. It whipped, whipped out its spiked tail. The Allosaurus reared in pain as the spike dug into its flesh. The battle was short but brutal. The Allosaurus attacked the young Stegosaurus until it fell dead on the ground. The old Stegosaurus was wounded, but it got away. Then the Allosaurus fell on its prey and began to devour it. Gross, Wanda said. I can't watch. This is a perfect time for us to escape, the free said, and we still have to find Phoebe. We crept out from under the giant tree roots. Then we headed back to where we had last seen Phoebe. Phoebe, the freeze called out, her voice echoed through the Jurassic Forest. Over here, we heard a familiar voice answer. In a few minutes, we found Phoebe sitting in a grassy clearing. She was playing with the ten baby diplodocus. She looked really happy. Can we take them home, Miss Freeze? Oh, they would make great classroom pets until they got a few months old. Tim said by then they would be bigger than our classroom. No, Phoebe. They belong just where they are in Jurassic Town. Miss Frizzle, I interrupted her to ask, do you smell something burning? Frizzle stopped to sniff the air, so did everyone else. 
a forest fire. Look, there's a wall of smoke coming through the trees. Head back to the bus, she ordered. It's time to say goodbye to Jurassic Time. This is better than going to the library. But what about the babies? Phoebe pleaded. We can't just leave them here. You know what? I saw a river when we landed. It was just on the other side of the nest. Carlos said, maybe you could carry them to the other side. Where the fire won't reach them. Great idea, Carlos. But hurry, we picked up the Diplodocus babies and ran with them toward the magic school that and the river behind us. We could hear the fire cracking through the trees. Uh, the dinosaurs were starting to run from it too. Finally, we saw the bus there and the river. Baby carried the first baby across the shallow river and brought across the last one. When they were all safe on the other side of the water, we went for the bus jet. Wow, I said as I sat down, these seats are getting hot. Miss Fizzle was busy typing on her keyboard. I looked out the window. We saw a wall of flame coming toward us. Just as things were going, getting too hard to handle, we all heard a loud whoosh, and the Jurassic period was left behind us in a big blur. Chapter 7 Time was whizzing by. Outside the windows of the magic school dead. Where? I mean, when are we headed? Miss Fizzle Wanda asked, what do you mean, when? You're almost burned to a crisp. Don't you think it's time to go home? Just one more stop, Arnold. We are still in search of an owner for Ralphie's tooth. Cretaceous period is next, the freeze answered. Clicking on the screen of her laptop, Dorothy Ann had her head buried in her dinosaur field guide. Hey, Ralphie, she said. You have a great chance of finding the owner of your fossil now. There were many more plant eaters in the Cretaceous period than ever before. Cretaceous period lasted from 144 to 65 million years ago. The supercontinent of Pangaea was breaking into the separate continents that, that we have today. By the end of the Cretaceous period, there were seasons. I don't mind checking out the teeth of dead dinosaurs, I said, but it's not easy to make a live dinosaur say, aha, uh -huh. you need some binoculars to help with your detective work, wealthy. The free says she reached under the driver's seat and pulled out a pair. I hung the binoc binoculars around my neck and just then we landed in the Cretaceous period with a splash. I mean, with the real splash, magic school jet crash landed into a big lake. It started to sink. And there was water up to the window. The free start fast and pushed the, the flotation, flotation button. The wings separated and turned into four big floating inner tubes. Look over by the shore, Carlos yelled. It's a herd of rhinoceros. No, it's a herd of Triceratops, Dorothy Ann corrected him. Let's get closer, the free says, steering the floating bus jet nearer to where the Triceratops were grazing. I checked out the Triceratops teeth through my binoculars. None of them looked like my tooth fossil. Why are they called uh, Triceratops? Miss Frizzle, Tim asked. Good question, Tim. The free said, many dinosaurs were named for the way they looked. Hey, Ralphie. Kyle, eh? What does a triceratops sit on? Tell me, Carlos, I said. It's triceratops. Hmm. Kisha said, trying to ignore us. Things are so nice and peaceful in the Cretaceous period. Uh-oh, you spoke too soon, Tim said. He pointed to the other side of the lake. True dawn. Dorothy and gasped. A group of Trudon were prowling along the water's edge. They weren't much taller than humans, but they had a wicked look in their big eyes. All of a sudden, the Trudon saw the herd of Triceratops across the water. 
quick as lightning, they sped up on their skinny fast legs. We've got to warn the Triceratops. I feel guys said that children will eat the babies of other dinosaurs. Dorothy Ann shouted. I leaned over Miss Frizzle and honked the bus's horn. Miss Frizzle stepped on the gas and headed the bus even closer to the herd. Triceratops looked up, saw the magic school bus a churning told them. With loud bellows, the herd took off into the woods. Judon was still chasing the herd, but the Triceratops had a good head start. They left the Trudon in the dust. All right. Carlos said, giving me a high five, we outsmarted the Trudon. Come on, kids. The fish said, let's see if we can find the dino with the wealthiest tooth fossil. I parked the bus up on the shore. Miss Frizzle released the air from our float and it turned back into a bus as we drove onto dry land. We scrambled out, ready to track down more dinosaurs. This is so much fun, Wanda said. But just then, we heard a loud roar echo through the forest. It was followed by a sharp animal scream. Then the forest was quiet, dead quiet. Chapter 8 what was that? Phoebe asked in a scared whisper. I don't know, the freeze answered, but I can guess. Me too. Dorothy Ann said, I'll bet it was T-Rex. A shiver ran up and down my spine. I pulled out the fossil tubes from my back. Let's check out a few more jawbone skeleton, I said. And then get out of here. I don't want to run into any more live dinosaurs. Finding skeletons was not a problem. There were plenty of them around. T-Rex must have been a messy eater. He just left his bones lying around after dinner. Miss Swizzle bent down over the jawbone of a medium-sized dinosaur. Look class, this was a duckbill dinosaur. It had hundreds of rows of spiky teeth. Those must have been a nightmare to brush, Kisha said. How about this guy? Tim called out. He was kneeling beside a huge skull that belonged to a domehead dinosaur. These are both plant eaters. Wealthy, get out your fossil and see if you have a match. I studied both jawbones, but neither contained any teeth that matched my fossil tooth. We walked a farther on into the woods to find more skeletons. Up ahead, there was a sudden rustling in the trees. We saw a spiky tail with a huge claw at the end of, at the end, disappear through the trees in front of us. There was an Ankylosaurus. Dorothy Ann said, I would recognize that tail anywhere. Meanwhile, I had found something exciting on the ground. Miss Frizzle, I yelled, check out these tracks. I felt like a real dino detective. I spotted some huge footprints on the damp forest floor. Miss Frizzle took out a ruler and started to measure the print. One and a half feet long, she muttered, and about 12 feet apart. According to my research, Dorothy Ann said, we are looking at the tracks of a T-Rex. These tracks certainly are fresh. Miss Frizzle said the T-Rex can be far away Oh bad, oh bad. What if the Ankylosaurus walks right into it? Maybe we can chase it anyway, away in time. DA says she took off after the Ankylosaurus before Miss Frizzle could stop her. We all hurried after DA, walking in the tracks of the T-Rex. The tracks climbed steadily up to the top of a hill. We were huffing and puffing by the time we reached the top. But when we got there, the view was really awesome. Big grassy plains spread out below us. I couldn't believe how much we could see. In the distance, there was a herd of triceratops. On the other side of the lake was a, gro a group of children. But one dinosaur stood out among the rest. It looked like a king. In fact, it was one T-Rex. T-Rex stalked back and forth on the plain, 
looking for prey it was huge but it still moved quickly on its powerful legs suddenly it came to a standstill i pulled out my binoculars and took a close look i almost wish it i hadn't binoculars zoomed right in on t-rex's head its nose was moving up and down with the scent of prey its huge jaws were wide open i saw bone crunching teeth that they were each almost nine inches long i stepped i stopped counting them after i reached 50. oh no they're the ankylosaurus walking right into t-rex's trap i focused my binoculars back to the edge of the clearing ankylosaurus was just coming out of the tree when he saw the t-rex it snarled with fear i zoomed in on its teeth with my binoculars they were a perfect match and an ankylosaurus fossilized tooth in my hand but ankylosaurus tooth is no match for a jaw full of t-rex teeth the king of the dinosaurs attack it was fast and deadly it was not a pretty sight it's feasible i don't want to be a dino at dinner can we go back to school now ralphie are you ready my detective work is done i said tucking my fossil into my backpack oh miss Weasel, maybe that ankylosaurus was just an appetizer t-rex still looks hungry and he's heading our way we made some fast tracks ourselves back to the magic school bus after we all piled inside the fleas the freeze flipped open her laptop she typed into the dead and then clicked on t trouble whoosh we are on our way back home so carlos i yelled to be heard i got one for you what do you get when dinosaurs crash their cars what tyrannosaurus rex chapter nine we landed back in the magic school bus's special space in the school parking lot home sweet home wanda yelled no meat eating dinosaurs anywhere as we piled out of the bus keisha asked did we really travel back in time or was that just a totally strange dream Miss Frizzle gave Keisha a mysterious smile. But when I stepped out of the bus, she pulled me aside. Look, Ralphie, the freeze said. She pointed to a deep scratch neck to the windshield of the bus. I guess we'll have to replace that window, she added with a wink. I remember the qualifices scratching the hatch way back in the Triassic period. I met the freeze's eyes and winked back. When we got into the classroom, Miss Frizzle's friend from the museum, Dr. Marcus, was waiting for us. He said he had been worried since we never showed up at the museum. I pulled out my dinosaur fossil to show him. I bet you can guess what this is. I know what it is, I said. It's an ankylosaurus too. So amazing, young man. Dr. Marcus said, you're yeah, absolutely right. And I have just placed for an ankylosaurus tooth at the museum. That is, if you'd like to donate it. I would be happy to. I've seen enough dinosaur teeth today to last a lifetime. Dr. Marcus gave me a funny look, but I just looked at the rest of the class and smiled. The end.